through on a British turn. So I'm going to show you the Australians first since they're the least exciting. They're building a transport and an infantry. They used the Dutch money. And then um, over here, the Australians left the Gambler Islands and went one, two, three to this place where they have a major port and dropped off their Marines. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them yet, but they're, I need to threaten the Japanese. I need to threaten this Japanese fleet. This entire stack here, plus all this, is all together in one spot. The only thing that's not there is that one destroyer. So, I need to give them a reason to come out, and hopefully the Americans can get closer with that fleet. Um, all right, British in the FEC, what have they done? Well, not much. They built an infantry, they built another Gurkha, and they built a colonial. It's not much of a block, but it is jungle, and these tanks attack at two, and the infantry attacks at one. I mean, the Japanese do have an air force that's a little bit incredible. They got four tacticals and four fighters that can get involved anywhere. So, we'll see what happens. Although, the British do have an, I believe they have an air base in here. They don't have an air base. Oh my goodness. I guess they can't scramble those four fighters out of there. <laughs> I thought they had one. Oh man, I would have built them one if, I, if I'd known. Anyway, it's a little late for that now. So, yeah. They're just defending there. Um, Non-combat moves have moved two infantry and two tanks from eastern Egypt into... Western Egypt, and they're just sitting there. That's as far as I can go because it's desert, so I can't uh, move two and I can't blitz or any of that silliness. So we'll see what happens there. Um, up here, I might as well show you my build first. I'm building five tanks and an infantry, and then I've non combat moved one infantry down to London from uh, Northern England. All right, um, so I do have a few interesting things happening in here. So I'll just show you what I'm doing here. We're going to strategic bomb this factory here uh, with the Strat Bomber that came out of uh, Normandy. It's moved to one, two, three, and it still has, uh, oh, I believe the British have long range. No, they don't. Doesn't matter. It's coming out of an air base, so it's moved three, and it can move six without the air base, so it'll come back to to Paris, which has been liberated by the British. All the forces that were in here have moved into Paris, as well as two infantry that were over here. We've non-combat moved two, two tanks across the uh, channel port here. Um, we've attacked... Belgium with four infantry that were in, in Picardy and two Marines that have wandered across the waves here from London and we're bringing in a fighter against the one tact uh, one infantry and over here in the Netherlands we're using our three attack transports we brought three tanks and three infantry into the Netherlands versus one infantry um, not sure how this is gonna go but uh, those are the only attacks I actually have. So uh, let's make this simple. All right. So there's going to be a whole lot of income changes this turn. So we'll see. So we got a fighter. That's a hit. All right, so Belgium is done. One in the retaliation takes a dude. Has to be amphibiously assaulting first, so I lose a Marine. Okay, so Belgium is done. Belgium becomes British. All right, so Britain goes up to the Belgium. But at the same time, Britain's going to go down one two three here so because it all goes french so i need to remember that 
But so far I'm up two. And now let's do the landing up there. So roll three tanks at six. And we've got a five and two nines. So let's roll one defense back and it missed. There we go. All right, so the British go down one and the Dutch go up two, which is basically British money. All right, so the British go down one because they lose three here, but they go up two there. The French go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the French go up seven, the Americans go down one, the British go down one, the Dutch go up two, and the Germans go down two. This is complicated, but not really. All right, so that is my moves for this turn. And we shall see what the Americans do next. So just because there's so many things going on. Germany just went down three for Paris. So one, two, three. The French went up three per, for Paris. One, two, three. The Dutch went up two. Germany goes down two. Britain goes up two, but they go down three, so they actually go down one, which goes to, and those three go one, two, three, and then Germany goes down two for those Belgium. All right. Um, yes. That's it. That's a whole lot of moving around. So Germany's way down. They're down to 40 now. And a lot of their holdings are like random scraps that are lying around. So we'll see what happens next go around. All right, so that is the British turn, quick and simple. Don't have a lot of units. The French are gonna be a little bit different because they got a whole lot of different land they had. Okay, it's the French turn, but I forgot to do my strategic bombing. So we're gonna do one One uh, defensive built-in anti-aircraft, and we're going to do two D6 damage, and we're going to do that in Western Germany, and that's brutal. So that's 10 and 2. So I've lost my strategic bomber. I, I The Germans had an option to scramble. I just forgot about it, and that's okay. And now the uh, factory gets 10 damage in Western Germany, but I've lost a $12 unit, so that sucks for me, but uh, I think, to be honest, Germany is going to hurt more because it can't build any units in that factory until it repairs some damage. Uh, let's just leave that sitting right there then. It's a little hard to show what's going on. All right, so... Now the French finally get a tech roll almost because their major factory, I spent their $3 in the bank to remove three damage so they don't have one left. Uh, the rules say they get four free militia that they can place in Paris or its surrounding land zones and I just put them all in Paris because why not? That is where their money is based again. That is their capital, so... Um, yeah, and, um, I've taken all the free French roundels off. I honestly don't normally do that. Normally I just leave it regularly French because it's so much easier. You're just putting them on and taking them off. Like, why? It's easy enough to tell that that's the French. Anyhow, what have we done? We have built those there, repaired three damage, still one left. All right, and then over here, we have moved from this location, one, two with the tank, and only one with two infantry. We're moving them up that way. Uh, that's where the threats are. And the uh, Marines that were sitting in, I just got to 
I have too much navy in the ocean here. I have marines sitting in the Eritrea here. They have just been launched up into Transjordan, same sea zone. So um, that's where they've gone. I was thinking about bringing my navy in here, but there's too many Axis navy. Why well, just throw it away for no reason? So we did not. Although I could bring the sub in, so let's do that. One, two. Let's convoy the Italians for a buck. Why not? Why not? Now, Italy does not have radar or advanced anti submarine warfare. So that should be an easy roll. Um, I don't know if you guys care to see it, but uh, I'm just going to do it. Alright, I rolled a 6 for the attacker, plus 2, and the defense has 3, there's only 1 on the line, so Italy loses a buck. Because that's all it's worth. That means the Americans can't convoy them this turn either. There's no benefit to it. All right. So that is the French turn. So France collects $10 plus they get their bonus for Eastern Egypt being allied possessed. So they get an extra dollar for that. So they collect 11 that is the French turn. Faster and slower than normal, but uh, making some money for a change. All right, it's the Italian turn. Not too much craziness is happening. Um, I used two strategic naval moves from my own base here. One, two, three, four, to bring two transports there. Um, these three... Oh, I can't make it there with this one. Never mind. Uh, the rest of these, the Navy that was in uh, C Zone 36 has moved to 52, move of two. Um, the transport, the destroyer and cruiser that were in 52 have moved to 151. And um, the uh, transport, cruiser, and destroyer that were in 151 have come down to 81. And they've dropped off an extra infantry at both locations here. To kind of hopefully hold back the horde here. Um, we'll see. I don't know if that's going to... I don't think it's going to work. But uh, it's, anything, it's a delaying tactic. That's about it. Um, otherwise, we've flown the uh, fighter that was here in Anatolia into northern uh, Italy. It's flown... One, two, three, four to get there, so we're good. Uh, we built two extra infantry here to replace the two we took down south. And we built five extra advanced mechs, so that we now have a total of 12 up there. So we'll see. Hopefully that's enough to hold back any kind of crazy horde. I think Italy is going to be the, the, the cherry on the cake after they smash into the German cake here. I think that's how things are going to play out. Um, Italy's currently holding on to Yugoslavia with the Germans, but I don't think they're going to really hold it for too long. And they've got Gibraltar, but uh, they should be able to hold Gibraltar, but we'll see. Anyhow, um, Britain did get. Um, Wartime economy. I forgot to show that one and I forgot to roll it. So I've rolled them four for the wartime economy. Now, it's a split economy. It only gets one tech roll for wartime economy, but that wartime economy can, as far as I know, can be split amongst the different nations uh, or the different uh, pieces of the same nation, which is the British Empire. Or Commonwealth, whatever you want to call it. Because technically Canada and Australia have separate home countries because they're separate countries that voted to join them. 
Same as the Dutch, so it should kind of also be separate money. But I guess this is how it's working for the game, so we'll play it this way. All right. Um, so Italy needs to do its wartime economy. And Italy also has the opportunity to try and sink a, an American submarine here. So it's going to try that. I forgot to show you that one. So all it is is we're just going to take the two, the tactical and fighter that were in Northern Italy on map for one turn and then bring them back up. That's why I forgot to show it there. I had meant to throw down one of these. So the sub can't shoot at the planes, but the planes get one round and then the sub submerges if it stays alive. So we'll make this really simple. I got green and red. Fortunately, I don't have any red dice. I should probably buy some. Um... So yeah, we're going to roll the green one for the tactical, the orange one for, there we got two hits. We only can take two, take, can take one hit off of them. So the American sub is gone. There you go. A coastal sub, I'm sure the Americans are going to be very upset about that. But I might want to move my navy in there, so... All right, and then the other thing left to do with Italy is its wartime economy, which we'll do right now. They collect um, 14 plus 4 for their bonuses, and the... Italy's never going to go away. That's an 11, a 5 and a 6. Italy is not going to leave. He's a bane in, my, in everybody's existence. So Italy gains another eleven dollars. So it went from eighteen to nineteen twenty-nine. Almost thirty bucks for Italy next turn, and it's got two major factories. So we shall see what it builds. And that is the Italian turn. Next one is the Americans. So uh, yeah, Italy did lose a dollar from the French convoy. So took that out of the 27 they had to bring them down to 26 now they're at 30 30 something i can't remember what i said 29 something like that it's crazy it's nuts anyway that's italy okay it's my american turn so let's show you what i did here uh all my builds got placed on the other side except for the fighter i lend least to the french so we took everything that's here Except for the destroyers. And this cruiser came from the U.S. Brought four extra infantry to here. The cruiser that was in 24 has moved two down to here to join this stuff here. All right. Now it gets complicated. So we just did some reinforcing here. We flew a medium from British Midlands to Paris. We lend lease the fighter to Picardy. Um, I can pick whichever port, I guess. So I picked that one because it's where the units are. And it can't scramble, but it's good enough. It's at least protected. Um, the Americans brought four infantry and two Marines from Portugal. They dropped those off in Picardy. Uh, they walked three infantry into the Netherlands to join the British. They drove... A light tank two into uh, the Netherlands and they used the transport that was already here to move two elite Marines there and rail the other four to the Netherlands so they railed a total of six there plus move the tank so I didn't actually attack anything this turn on this side that's all I've done so that is it so there's only four infantry in uh, America, but nothing else is in range, so I'm not too worried about that at the moment. All right, now on this side, some interesting developments occurred. We placed a militia here in the Carolines, that way we can scoop up all these Marines. Um, we split our fleet into two cards. Uh, the Hawaiian fleet has come to New Britain here. Everything, there was no transports, everything moved three, but with the port, it moves four. Same with this stack here, because they got fast battleships, and they've upgraded fleet carriers, so they move at uh, three instead of two now, which is beautiful. So this is the uh, 
two fast battleships, two fleet carriers, two heavy cruisers, two destroyers to join the British. And then the other one there is four battleships, three cruisers, three destroyers, and two fleet carriers. And then our build, the rest of it, was up here. We built six transports and two stacks so I can split them up if need be. Three destroyers and two elite marines to go with the one that was already there in San Francisco. So uh, that should give me the ability to transport 12 units. I got four over there. And I got another, what do we got? Four, five, six, seven, eight here. So that should work for now anyway. I might have to build a shuck. That's why I built two stacks of three. That does give the Japanese the ability to build militia cheaper in their homeland. Right now, Japan isn't too worried about that. They're making 70 some dollars they can spend next turn. And their entire fleet is all parked right here, which is in range of both of these fleets. I wasn't sure if I could co should combine them or not, but I know if I combine them, I would for sure get hit. If I split them up, maybe I won't. And my thoughts with Japan is Japan was really focused on beating down India. If it can do that, that's a victory point right here. Which, you know, doesn't seem like much, but if you can take that one, the odds of the Americans coming back to take that, along with Nanking and Tokyo, that's three points automatically. Not counting anything else. So, don't know what the plan is there. So, we'll see. So, that is the American turn. They still, they failed every technology they have. All five rolls fail. It's brutal. It's kind of like the Russians and their strategic rockets. I haven't even started it on the board, and I've been rolling it for a long time because it's worth a point for me. Alrighty, so that's it. Those are the two fleet cards there. So enjoy. That is be the end of the game or the end of the turn anyway. Uh, this would be the tail end of January 47 or 22 is the number of turns. Two left on the chart.